have you noticed that businesses are preferring that you don't pay with cash? So there's an article in the Toronto Star and it says that more and more, it seems that uh, there are many businesses in this category, but that not accepting cash might disproportionately impact vulnerable people like the homeless, maybe like the elderly or people of a certain generation, and maybe even some new immigrants to Canada. Pros and cons of this. We have a message from Jen on Twitter. Jen says, quote, always cash. Digitizing currency only works if everyone is on a level playing field with equal opportunities, not to mention the data mining and adverts that already overwhelmingly fill out lives. I love this point, Jen, and thanks for, for raising it. I use plastic and cash. I always have cash on me. Um, but it brings up an interesting point Jen does uh, about uh, equality and opportunity and level playing fields, because there is a generation, a younger generation of people out there who you would think, you know, their technology, they're tech savvy and they're modern and cash is kind of like an old school kind of thing. But more and more, as we've been examining, especially over the last couple of months, people don't trust institutions and established, established status quo um, arms of society. And so there is a younger generation. They're not loud and big so far, but their numbers are growing who are like, yeah, yeah, just give me the cash. I don't want to put my money in the bank. I do not want to be, you know, trusting my assets with uh places and people that have let down society and let us go and bankrupted our future. Yeah, you know what, Lane, I know that you always have cash because I have benefited from it. We're in situations and this has happened where <laughs> cash is necessary. You're always the one that has the cash because I'm the one with the plastic half the time. Here's the thing though, I, I have the privilege of having a bank account, right? Having a job that puts money into that account. So as mentioned, what about homeless people? What about new Canadians? Others who don't have the luxury of qualifying for a bank account, because you do, you have to have an address and other things to even get one. And I will say from a generational standpoint, the other side lane, uh, the older uh, folks, my parents, Cash is king, like when it comes to my parents. If they need something, if they have got to buy something, they go to the bank and withdraw that money, and then they go and do their business. To this day, you know, my dad is constantly trying to shove 50 bucks into my wallet or into the glove compartment of my car <laughs> for what he calls emergencies. You know, just in case you have an emergency. Yeah. Exactly. I think, you know, our parents, they're all coming from the same generation, Marcy, because I'm pretty sure that it's questionable business people and my parents keeping safety deposit boxes alive and well, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> this is the generation that, right? This is the generation that's like the money in the mattress because they weren't raised with plastic. That wasn't a thing. Um, credit was not a thing. I, I'm pretty sure my parents bought their very first home together with cash, and that's not uh, an abnormal situation for that generation in the 70s. You put, I mean, first of all, homes were far more affordable, but you put down cash, like walking around with a suitcase. And so my sister and I, uh, you know, were doing succession planning in the family, and I have a sneaking suspicion that if there is, which I don't know, but if there is a lot of cash sitting in safety deposit boxes, what do we do with that? Because you think I'm going to roll up in the grocery store and like take out wads? You think I'm going to buy a car with a suitcase full of cash? <laughs> like people don't accept cash that way anymore. There is almost a forced usage of credit, especially, and debit. But, but Mel, imagine trying to tell like our grandparents or our great grandparents that in 2020, there are places that don't accept cash. I think their minds would be blown. Mm. And I agree with everything you guys are saying. Like, we're not fully equipped to go cashless yet because there's still a portion of the society that doesn't deal with physical or that can only deal with physical currency. But I'd also argue that businesses, especially right now during these unprecedented times, should have to accept debit as payment. And I know this is an expensive operation to run, especially for small businesses, but I do see it, it's, it, I do see it as today as the cost of doing business. Like the way
way you pay for electricity, you have insurance, you have a front door, you should have a debit machine. Simon, though, went into a restaurant uh, for takeout. It was the first time he did this. It was just a couple of weeks ago. And he was pretty apprehensive. And he walked in and then he saw the hand sanitation hand sanitation uh, center right in front of him. He's like, okay, this is good. Lots of signs saying, you know, mass mandatory. Everyone was super friendly. He gets up to the cash to get the food. And there's plexiglass. There's another hand sanitation uh, station there. He's like, okay, this is amazing. And then he gets out his debit card and they're like, we only take cash. It's like, what? This is, what was the point <laughs> of all of that up until then? <laughs> Come on. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of <laughs> restaurant was it, Jess? Like what kind of food? He didn't tell me. Okay. Pizza maybe? Because I was thinking pizza slice? When you were telling this story, I was thinking couldn't have been Chinese food because you know, there's an added <laughs> another element to this. <laughs> there's another element to this, which is which communities and which cultures. Um I spent a lot of time in the Chinese community. That's where my parents spend a lot of time and when you're getting a Chinese takeout and in many places, other East Asian takeout, cash is still very much appreciated and accepted for sure. In fact, some places, a lot of places, you pay cash, you get 10% off. I'm always picking up takeout from my parents, my mom, when I go over to see her these days. And she's all, like, when I'm there, when I'm on my way there, she's like, be on time. And did you go to the, did you have cash? Because don't forget, get the 10% off. Like, my parents are big on saving money wherever. Um, so you pay cash, <laughs> you get 10% off. They are down. <laughs> it's so good. But there is the question of the pandemic. Back to your point, Jess, because of all the hygiene theater, as we've discussed on this show, I actually yesterday went through a drive through to get a coffee. And I usually pay for almost everything with my phone. It's just tap there, tap here. And who mm -hmm. travels anywhere without their phone these days? It's the most convenient way that I don't even need a card. I just need my phone. Um, but the, the total came up to $2.10. And I was like, okay, am I going to tap for $2.10? And it was sitting in my cup holder in my car and I found it. And then I was like, oh my gosh, my hands are bare. So I was like, oh, she's probably going to have, or he's probably going to have gloves and they're sanitizing. The window opens and she puts her hand out bare mm. and I stared at her bare hand. And I was like, oh my God, are we going to do this? And I gave her the toonie and the dime, almost like, I don't know what's gonna happen. And there went the money. So it's it's something to think about. On the one hand, convenience. On the other hand, pandemic. I don't know what the answer is, but I shouldn't be tapping for $2.10. I don't think. 